our voices to the Lord Most High. With joyful singing we will glorify. Hello and welcome to this, our pre-recorded service on behalf of the Stafford Methodist Circuit. If you don't know me, I'm the Reverend David and I'm one of the staff team here in Circuit. I'm very pleased today to be uh, able to join in this particular act of worship uh, as I'm joined by members from Barkswich. So we begin our worship together in prayer. Let's pray. Generous God, by your grace, encourage us in this moment to worship you, to praise your name, and to sing of your goodness and glory. Amen. And so we begin uh, our worship uh, with our first hymn. adoration. Lord God, you have borne our pains, shared our journeys, offered us unconditional love. You have breathed your spirit into us, blessed us with the gift of your Son. You have sacrificed so much for us. We adore you and offer you our lives. You have given us a vision of your kingdom, have offered us a way of life worth living, a loving to share, a presence at all times, we adore you and offer you our lives. You are the open arms of acceptance, the warmth of a hearty welcome, the joy of a sincere smile. We bow before you in worship 
and adoration for all that you are. Amen. A prayer of confession. In easy times without fear or conflict, we are happy to stand up as Christians and follow you, our almighty God. When we face no threats of persecution, we are happy to cast our lot with you, our almighty God. But when challenges comes, when disputes erupt, when questions get asked, odd, painful questions, we are not always so willing to stand up and be counted. It is easier to lie low and keep quiet. Forgive us, O oh God. If when challenges come, we lower our flag and pull up our drawbridge and withdraw to isolation, leaving you to fight the cause of love, justice and peace with people other than us. Forgive us, eternal God, for such failings and weaknesses. Forgive us and bless us. So often our welcome lacks sincerity. The word is cold on our lips. The smile does not reach our eyes. We are polite, but there is little warmth in our hearts. Perhaps no deeds accompany our words. No comfort offered, hospitality withhold. We ask forgiveness of the one who always receives with open arms, generous caring and meeting needs and so much more. We ask forgiveness. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
The lesson is from Romans chapter 6, reading verses 12 to 23. Sin must no longer rule in your mortal bodies, so that you obey the desires of your natural self. Nor must you surrender any part of yourselves to sin to be used for wicked purposes. Instead, give yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and surrender your whole being to him to be used for righteous purposes. Sin must not be your master. For you do not live under law, but under God's grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under God's grace? By no means. Surely you know that when you surrender yourselves as slaves to obey someone, you are in fact the slaves of the master you obey, either of sin which results in death, or of obedience, which results in being put right with God. But thanks be to God, for though at one time you were slaves to sin, you have obeyed with all your heart the truths found in the teaching you received. You were set free from sin and became the slaves of righteousness. I use everyday language because of the weakness of your natural selves. At one time, you surrendered yourselves entirely as slaves to impurity and wickedness for wicked purposes. In the same way, you must now surrender yourselves entirely as slaves of righteousness for holy purposes. When you were the slaves of sin, you were free from righteousness. What did you gain from doing the things that you are now ashamed of? The result of those things is death. But now you have been set free from sin and are the slaves of God. Your gain is a life fully dedicated to him and the result is eternal life. For sin pays its wage, death, but God's free gift is eternal life in union with Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 10 verses 40 to 42. Rewards. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes God's messenger, because he is God's messenger, will share in his reward, and whoever welcomes a good man because he is good will share in his reward. You can be sure that whoever gives even a drink of cold water to one of the least of these my followers, because he is my follow follower, will certainly receive a reward. Amen. Have you ever found yourself driving back to a home you no longer live in, uh, or with a sat nav significantly demanding? you take a different path because it's not been updated to include that new bypass you know will cut 25 minutes off your journey. As a toddler, I spent much of my time firmly grasping the sofa and using it to prop, uh, as a prop to hold myself up, furniture surfing as it's known. On one occasion, uh, my slightly older cousin arrived and ran around the room. And at that moment, I let go of the sofa and joined my cousin running around, playing in the house. When they'd left to go home, I realised what had happened and suddenly in tears uh, I fell to my hands and knees 
and crawled back to the safety and support of the sofa, where I then stood up once again, grasping the sofa at its edge. It only took the rebuke of my mother uh, to have me once again walking around the room without the security I had come to rely on. The passage from Romans here reminds us that as those called into a new life, into a new way of being, we must be willing to live that life and not end up returning ourselves to the old ways uh, we had known. This is difficult for us because it is our nature often to continue with bad habits, uh, to stay in the roots of our past practices and fail to find a way forward that heads out of them. Paul's words, therefore, remind us of our brokenness, somewhat like the brokenness of a record, skipping back to where we were rather than continuing forward to where God is calling us. Yet it is the case that Paul doesn't preach these words to us in the absence of the passages which surround them. To the contrary, Paul only preaches these words, asking us to hold to our new life after he has preached, where it is that our strength in that new life is found. Paul's words here in Romans 6 have been built upon a foundation of the past five chapters, in which we find an engagement in Paul's expression and experience of the grace of God. Friends, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to imply that we just have to have God in our lives and then it will be easy. Quite the opposite. Because we have God in our lives, we recognise that it is tough, but necessary. Yet when we fail, when we fall short of what God would wish for us, we don't find ourselves thrown on the scrap heap of failure, but instead picked up, dusted off, and return to find the journey of faith with a God we adore and who adores us. Further, the response to what we are then called into isn't about particular practices, nor about the demands that we might have made upon us in other places. With God, it's more about our intention, an intention to serve, to live the gospel, to share God's love, Matthew's Gospel expresses this in recognising what it is to lose the reward. We aren't expected to be perfect, to manage the sacrifice that Jesus has undertaken. Jesus has undertaken that for us. Instead, in the intentionality of service, of welcoming Jesus into our lives, in the simple actions of living out the Gospel, even in the smallest of ways, God's grace is found to be at work in us and through us too. To those who feel stuck in our rut, God is there to help you out. That's the nature of grace. It's a revolution, a redirection of whom we are, ever are encouraging our heart to beat a little bit more like our saviours. Might that beat be present for you as you live out, serve, and share the gospel in the week to come. Amen. So we pray. Because you made the world and intended it to be a good place and called its people your children. Because when things seemed at their worst, you came in Christ to bring out the best in us. So, gracious God, we pray. Goodness is stronger than evil, love stronger than hate, light stronger than darkness, truth stronger than lies. Because confusion can reign inside us despite our faith, because anger, tension, bitterness and envy distort our vision, because our minds sometimes worry about small things and blow them out of all proportion. 
because we do not always get it right. We want to believe. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness, and truth is stronger than lies. Because you have promised to hear us, and are able to change us, and are willing to make our hearts your home, we ask you to confront, control, forgive, and encourage us, as you know best. Then let us cherish in our hearts that which we proclaim with our lips. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Truth is stronger than hate. Holy God, though this world depends on your grace, it is governed and tended by mortals. So we pray for those who walk the corridors of power in the parliaments of this and other lands, whose judgment we value or fear. May they always consider those they represent, make decisions with courage and integrity, and resist any temptation to abuse the trust placed in them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who hold key positions in the worlds of finance, business and industry, whose decisions may profit some or impoverish many. May they always value people higher than profit. May they never impose burdens on the poor, which they would not carry themselves. And may they never divorce money from morality, or ownership from stewardship. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those in the caring professions who look after and listen to kind cruel and cantankerous folk, and for those who make decisions regarding the nation's health and welfare. May they always sense the sanctity of life and every person's uniqueness. May they help and heal by their interest as well as their skill. And may they be saved from tiredness and excess of demands. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us.
thank you for joining us for worship this morning. Uh, we will be back with our pre-recorded service in two weeks time uh, when the Reverend Jimmy will be leading uh, on behalf of the circuit with help from members from St. John's. Uh, until then, uh, we offer every blessing to you. So we pray to finish our service. May God continue uh, to surround us and support us, to strengthen us this day and always. In and through his grace, we might know ourselves renewed and reshaped for his life and service. Amen. So God bless and please do have a good week.